So hi, everybody. My name is Tracy Davis. I'm president and CEO of Trax Analytics. And again, this is another segment of Tidbits with Tracy. Uh, and I have today a really, really exciting guest on Mr. Don Tool. So Don, why don't you tell us who the heck you are? <laughs> Well, thanks, Tracy. Uh, well, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Don Tool, and I am the Senior Vice President for Flagship Facility Services, and uh, I lead our sales and marketing teams, but I'm, I'm, I'm really about passionate about helping make solutions for the customers out there and making a difference each day. Wonderful. So thank you so much for being a part of this. We're really excited to have you. Uh, you know, what? one thing I want to talk a little bit about is the fact that we've had a wild year, and now we're looking into another wild year. But the era of COVID has really impacted the janitorial services world, the world that you are primarily focused in. Um, you know, I can only imagine the heightened sensitivity, heightened awareness, but what impacts of COVID have you seen on the janitorial services world that you combat daily? You know, I think the biggest thing I've seen is that it's really taken a, a, a job that a lot of people may have looked at in various ways in the past, and it's really made people realize the importance of what happens and how buildings are clean and how this truly is a, a an essential and a critical uh, profession that that touches the lives of everyone every day. And I think that that people took that for granted prior to COVID. And I, and I really think it's given a lot of light on people who do a great job and are, are really professionals at what they do. Cause it's not just, you know, uh, running through and, you know, whatever your, your, perception of cleaning was before, I'm quite certain that that has changed in the last year. So when I look at it, I look at it from that perspective that, yeah, we face challenges, but really it's brought a great positive light on really great people. No, that's wonderful. And I actually have to applaud you guys because one thing that I've really admired about your firm and then the work that you guys are doing is how the level of importance that you put on to the work that your team is doing and the janitorial teams out in the field and how I think you call them what frontline heroes or is that the I want to make sure I got well, that's that one right. of our that's one of ours. Yeah, that's one of our things we do as a spotlight on our on our uh, on our website, we always highlight our frontline heroes. We do a lot of segments around frontline heroes within social media. We really, really want them to 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 get the 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 recognition and and just really. There's a lot of pride that's taken in that work, and and for, I just have the luxury and the privilege to get to represent them, and it makes my job a lot easier, really. It's so wonderful. And I mean, when you actually you know, acknowledge the hard work that your team's doing out in the field, I feel like that actually pays back tenfold because it's sometimes a thankless job, unfortunately. And when it really is, as you said, it's essential and then even more so essential to the world that we live in right now. Um, so I, you know, I've gotten the privilege to know flagship quite a bit over the past couple of years and yourself. <laughs> and one thing that I've started to notice even more so just into my eyes is how flagship truly is an industry leader in what you guys are doing, not just even janitorial services, but facility management, aviation, which is my background, but also outside of it. So how does flagship continue to stay as an industry leader? What are you guys doing? What is the secret? I guess don't give away all your. Well, I, I, I seems to say we can't go too far here, Tracy. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but, but I really think it it starts with leadership, and and I am I'm a I'm I'm blessed to be a part of a of a leadership team. I'm, I'm I do represent our leadership team in in, a, in functions throughout the company, but but uh, it starts at the top, and uh, with Dave Pasick, who is our our founder and CEO, and it permeates throughout the organization. You know, a lot of companies put a lot of a face on on that type of thing, but to really be innovators and be leaders, you really, really have to have it start from the top and it has to be your culture. It has to be what you think about each day. And, and it does go back. I mean, it sounds simple, I guess, but it really does go back to it's the people. It's the people on the front lines that when you listen to them and you're thinking about what their needs are, and then we really are passionate about thinking about how can we differentiate ourselves? How can you look at the situations different? And because um, we're still a, you know, we're a privately held company and we're not too big, we're not too small, uh, we're able to make impacts without having a lot of other, uh, of, of, I guess, 
limitations because of, you know, uh, whatever different groups need to approve or whatever, we're able to really make decisions quickly and, and move along. And I really think that's what helps us to be innovative. But I think what we do more than anything else, and I'll do this because I am sitting here talking with you, but I do want to commend you is that we really look to partner and find people like yourself and, and with your organization uh, to be able to bring the latest things to the forefront because we feel like if we're doing that, we're being the best partner to our to our uh, client partners as well as to our employees and our staff because they benefit when we bring in innovation and we we keep being cutting edge on how we approach things. Well, thank you. That means a lot. It means a lot. It's been wonderful to get to know you guys too, and to to have the incredible partnership that we do is is really unique but powerful, especially to the industries that we serve. Um, you know, one difference that, you know, I've talked about this with you and your team and just from my experience working in the janitorial world with technology, but there really has been a shift in my eyes of the way that, you know, pre-COVID cleaning was often hidden. It was often done kind of, you know, you didn't want to impact journeys. And I've seen in a lot of our locations where it's great now that the, the janitorial staff is in the front, people want to see the cleaning taking place. They want to see that as almost a boost of confidence to get back in the building when really cleaning is taking place right in front of their eyes. So again, that's just my limited experience. What are you seeing in the industry? Is that a similar perspective? Yeah, I think that, that really that's, you know, you hear a lot of things about touch point cleaning and stuff like that. And and I do think that that's really been one of the biggest impacts is, is visualization. People want to see and, you know, there there's a sense of confidence that's created whenever there's visuals of people seeing that the, the activities taking place. Um, but, you know, I, I think that um, it really does vary also by where you're at, you know, like within an airport setting, that's one 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 perspective but when you're in like an industrial plant or a corporate facility there's a, there's another perspective so um so i do think that there's been a little bit of shift in timing it's been, it's more about the touch point cleanings at, there's confidence from that visualization that comes out of that uh but at, so i do think yes that's been a major change in where we're at and what's happening in the industry yeah and i'm sure it's gonna be you know a long ending. We're going to see this for years to come, and it's <laughs> hopefully there's a light at the end of the tunnel. If you don't believe so, just lie to me because I'm going to tell myself there's a light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> but well, thank you so much, Sean. It has been a pleasure. Just one quick fun fact about yourself. Tell us something that is so unique that nobody would ever know about Don Tool. No pressure. Oh man, I can't. I can't blip okay, those things out either. Favorite, what is your favorite bourbon? <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, you do know I do have a, uh, a a little bit of a soft spot that that's become a a uh, a, a nice venture for me. But I, I my my regular is Eagle Rare, so I'll give you all that as my Eagle Rare. But uh, I'll gi I'll also give you I'll I'll, I'll do this because I'm actually uh, sitting in a college town. Uh, my son is graduating in just a few weeks. So a fun fact for me, if I wanted to share something, is I'll share my pride is that. Uh, you know, my son's about to graduate with a biomedical engineering degree and my daughter's working on her Ph.D. So I just want whoever uh, kids I stole from the hospital. I just want to tell them thank you. So that's really what I wanted to get. <laughs> Those are your kids. Man, that's impressive. <laughs> Impressive. Well, congratulations to you and to the to the kids and to the family. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much, Tracy. Let me know anything I can do for you. And if there's anybody out there that we can lend a hand to, we're here to help. Just let me know. Thank you, Don. Thanks for the time and thanks for the partnership. All right. Take care. Thanks.